Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. This is uh, we're in the third Sunday of Pentecost, and uh, today we hear scripture where Jesus is talking about uh, offering a, a glass of water uh, as a as a way of welcome. We didn't bring water with us this morning, uh, except it's raining, right? Or or close to it. But uh, we welcome you with uh, with open arms. Uh, Pray that this time is a time you can uh, worship the Lord and hear the, hear the word of the Lord. Not a lot of announcements this morning uh, as we're coming into a 4th of July weekend. Uh, I'm assuming you're doing traveling and people are coming to visit and you're watching fireworks and we're uh, picnicking and uh, hope that the weather gets good. Uh, Remember that we have a Wednesday evening worship and a meal every Wednesday. Uh, we've got, uh, I don't know what the menu is though for Wednesday. Andy, are you here? Is, is this right? We ate something, we ate uh, the pasta salami last week. But What's it going to be? Pot roast. Pot roast this week. There you go. So you're invited to come for fellowship uh, meal, and uh, if you wish, stay for stay for worship uh, all Wednesdays throughout throughout this summer. I think we should just begin our worship uh, singing together. Can I tell them what to sing, Gary? Sure. This is my father's world. 824, 824, and I invite you to stand as we sing. remain standing for the opening dialogue. I'll read the uh, light print, L for light print, and uh, congregation respond in the dark print. You are the treasured people of the Lord. Keep the word, words of the Lord in your heart. Teach them to your children. One does not live by bread alone. We'll be singing the Kyrie Eleison, which is printed in your bulletin.
please join me in the prayer of the day. Together we pray, O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's scripture will be read by Linda Hagen. This morning's lesson is from Jeremiah 28, verses 5 through 9. Then the prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the Jer prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. <clears throat> May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Let's read together the psalm, which is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4 and 15 through 18, reading responsibly. I'll read the light print and you read the dark print. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festival shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly our shield belongs to the Lord, our King to the Holy One of Israel. Here ends the reading. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive the prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of the righteous person will receive the, wards, the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to the, ones of these, the one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. I'd like uh, to invite the kids to come forward. I have a question for them this morning. I think they can help me out. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. You gotta get her all the way up there. Good morning. I don't know if you if you kids know that this is my last Sunday here. Because I'm gonna go to a different church and you're gonna get a different pastor in a little while. But I wrote a card. It says thank you here. See, it's a thank you card. And I really felt that Jesus brought me here. That the reason I came here is because Jesus wanted me to come. So I wanted to thank Jesus for this. And you know what? Some of you read, right? You read. 
Can you can you read what it says in here? Dear Jesus, please come to my house for supper Friday night at six o'clock. Yeah. Dear Jesus, please come to my house for supper Friday night at six. Sandy, did you know I was doing this? <laughs> That's it. Then we'll go see fireworks afterwards, right? So I'm I'm ready to send this to Jesus. What do I do? How do I get it to Jesus so he knows he's invited? Mail it. <laughs> do we have anybody that has worked in the post office? Uh, how are you going to do that? Is that going to work? Uh oh, they say it, it just isn't going to work very well to mail it. I don't know that Jesus has an address. Should I just throw it real hard all the way up to heaven? Yep. <laughs> but, you would. What else could you do? We could pray about it. Well, Jesus would hear prayers. Well, it did say something in Scripture today about how to do it. Remember that Scripture that said something, if you welcome one, if you welcome me, it's, if you welcome a disciple, it's like welcoming me. Do we have any disciples here? Do you know what a disciple is? A disciple is somebody who follows Jesus. Do we have any people out here that follow Jesus? Only me. <laughs> it's more than, you know why they're laughing? Because it's more than just me. I bet she follows Jesus. Amy follows Jesus, yeah. John follows Jesus, Gary follows Jesus. So if, you know, if I gave the, this invitation to Gary, he'd be giving it to his disciples, and he came, it'd be like having Jesus come. When it, it says in the Bible, when we look into the eyes of somebody else, we should see Jesus in them that each one of us can be like Jesus to the other person. So, we could all invite Jesus to our houses when we invite somebody else and we welcome them and fix a good meal for them and do nice things. That makes Jesus real happy. But that's how we, that's how we get it, Jesus to, to come. Now, that, that's a little bit hard to understand when you're this size. But I think you understand it. Well, I'd love to have all of you come over to my house, but I don't think we're quite ready for that. <laughs> because it would be fun to have a big Fourth uh, of July celebration. Well, thank you for coming up. I'm going to say a prayer, and then I've got some candy for you. I understand they didn't always give candy out to kids. I started something here maybe with the Tootsie Rolls. You like that? Yeah, they like that. I think that's got to continue. <clears throat> Let's pray. Dear God, we pray your blessing upon these, these children, and we pray your blessing upon all those people that we might invite in the name of Jesus to be our friends, to, to eat with us, to, to dine with us, and uh, we thank you for the gift of the community and the congregation. In Jesus' name, amen. I've got this little bucket here, and it's got stuff in it, and I think Oh, I've got enough. You want to? You like M and M's? You like M and M's? There you go. I'm not not sure. I'm going to give you the M and M's. Can you have somebody share M and M's with you? Because I don't have. You know what you can have? You can have Tootsie Rolls. You better take two. There you go. And that's what you get, Amy. Tootsie Rolls. Yeah. There you go. Thanks for coming up. That's what I need. I need lights on the back of my shoes. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace to you and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, I had a choice on, on, on my sermon today if I should do a, a conventional sermon or do something a little different, and I decided to do something a little different. 
uh, you're going to actually get to talk to each other a little bit in this sermon. And uh, hopefully, uh, we'll, we'll learn something together. I want to begin with uh, talking about that place where you get a cool glass of water. Where am I talking about? It's in South Dakota. Wall drug. How many have been to Wall drug? Why in the world would you ever go to Wall drug? <laughs> and Wall, why? <laughs> it's a, you're passing through. It's not a destination. Why would you stop there? Why, how would you even know about it? The signs. Uh, according to the <coughs> according to the internet, which knows everything, <laughs> Ted Houston. He was a Nebraska native. He moved to Wall, this little town in the middle of nowhere in South Dakota, and he opened a tiny little drugstore in 1931. And five years later, it was still a tiny little drugstore in Wall, South Dakota. Dorothy, Ted's wife, and often it's the wife, you know, that, that gets things right, thought that travelers that were going past the store might enjoy a glass of water. If you've been in South Dakota during the summer, it's a little hot and dry, isn't it? <laughs> so he said maybe Ted would put a sign up outside of town advertising free ice water at Wall Drug. That was 1931. Well, that sort of caught on. He sort of went nuts on signs and giving out signs. Uh, today, it's a regular summer day, there'll be 20,000 people that stop at Wall Drug. And there's a little bit more there than a glass of water, right? Uh, Darren Magnuson on Wednesday said, it's a tourist trap. <laughs> anyway, these signs beckon people all over the place. And when you get there, you're welcomed. You're welcome to you get that glass of water in that un, unremarkable little place that's off the road uh, grew. It's huge. Now, you're going to have to do some translating on what that might mean for Wells, Minnesota. Not a destination, right? It is for you. It's where you live. But it isn't for lots of other people. And Good Shepherd Lutheran? Well, anyway, hold that thought. I was thinking about welcoming, and I was thinking about the Embassy Suites. Now, anybody stay at the Embassy Suites? A few of you have stayed there. What happens when you come up? There's a porter. They, the porter helps you with your luggage, helps you get checked in, shows you things. And then you get into this room, and it's spacious, and there are appliances, and it's clean. And then you get that wonderful breakfast, and everything is just, you're feeling so welcomed there at the Embassy Suites. The scripture we have today, Jesus tells us that we should be welcoming, right? He says we should be welcoming, and not only that, we, we ought to be offering a glass of water, offering something. Jesus would have us welcome his word, his message into our hearts, into our homes, but not to stop there, but to welcome others into our hearts and homes. Remember the, the, the scripture is, you've done unto the least of these, you've done unto me, Jesus says. So, and he says, if we give a cup of water even a cup of water, we will have our reward. Well, I want <clears throat> to, this is where you get to talk to each other. I'm going to ask the question, how do we do this? How do we offer a welcome to people? How do Christians in this church welcome? You know, there are people who aren't here today. A whole bunch of people aren't here. They might be members of this church. They might just be members of the community you're passing through. This is not only true here at in, in, in Good Shepherd, but it's true across our, our church. 
And you ask people, why don't they participate? Why don't they worship? And you will hear things like this. I don't feel welcome. I don't feel like I'm important. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if I'm there. Or when I come to church, I always feel judged by those hypocrites. This might be real or it might be a, a projection of their own guilt, but uh, they, they feel that coming to church is judged. Or they feel, you know, I, I just don't feel like I belong. I'm more of an outsider. Uh, it's a sort of a, a closed club and I can't, I, I'm always on the outskirts. I don't quite feel like I, I belong here. It's important for the church, for us, to find ways to get on the other side of all of that. So here's a little bit of an exercise for you. I want you to, this is with a person or a couple people next to you uh, here in church, and if you're not, if you're sitting in a pew sort of by yourself, slide down or whatever so you can talk. You get to talk in church during my sermon. Uh, I want you to think of a situation where you have felt particularly welcome. It could be in a church or it could be in a totally different setting could be in, in somebody's home. Uh, think of where you have felt particularly welcomed and at ease and, and so on and so forth. And I want you to tell the person next to you or talk amongst yourselves and share what that experience is. So you're, you're hearing from somebody telling you an experience of where you felt really welcome or and you're listening to somebody tell you an experience. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes to share, to talk, and then we're going to talk together again. Particularly welcome. Okay, you've, had, you've gotten some ideas percolating here. Let, let's hear about a few of these experiences. You notice, if you'll remember me for nothing else, I'm the pastor who likes to use chart paper, right? So who's got an experience they'd want to share? Yeah, go ahead. What did you hear? Yeah. Marlene raised it for you. <laughs> Wait just a second. I know how to do this. Start all over. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago when uh, my son Ryan and his wife Nicole were down in Omaha and they went to Presbyterian Church and they had ju were just starting a contemporary choir and we went to church with Nicole and the pastor came up and asked Julie and I to sing with the contemporary choir because she had told him we sang in the choir here at that oh. time. This was and, contemporary, like yeah. that. Like was our contemporary. So you were invited right in. Yeah, you know I thought well, that was really a cool experience. Got invited right in. Another experience. Where you felt real welcomed. Where have you felt the most welcome? Your children. Yeah, our family. How relatives. do you know you're welcome? <laughs> yeah, they feed us. <laughs> they, they feed us, they open arms, they actually hug you and... Oh yeah, you can always know you're welcome if you get a hug. You're going to add, Julie. 
this week I um, was invited down to the Bryceland Bone Builders with 13 ladies I did not know. And by the time I got done, I felt like I was part of their group. They invited, I got to go to a birthday party afterwards. And I felt from the minute I walked in that I belonged with those women. Crazy ladies from 65 to 90, but so much fun. So what was it that uh, sort of broke the ice or made you feel welcome? The minute I came in, they were laughing and talking and said, oh, you have to do this and try this and show this. Oh, wait, you have to have cookies. And then, you know, they just kept on the whole time. I was there for three and a half hours. Any, anybody else have an experience like that, not necessarily with bone builders, but share this common experience of just sort of being swept up and... Yeah, be a part of it. Join in. What other ways do we feel welcomed? Moving back. You know, you talked a lot when I <coughs> didn't ask you to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> By being acknowledged. Noticed. Yeah. Somebody, Sandy. Hang on, I'll... This is just another experience. I went to the post office in Albert Lee. It's open for about an hour in the morning on Saturdays. And there was a long line. People had packages, you know. And one la the other lady was um, doing a passport, so there was only one line. And this, new, this guy at the counter was uh, a new trainee. It said, I'm a trainee. Be good to me, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, he said... Welcome to the post office, all of you people. He said, this is a great place. It's a great place to work. Um, and we got rid of the unhappy people. We got, we got rid of that line. So you guys are in the happy line. <laughs> is that Meg Sanders out there? Pastor Meg. It took me a while to spot you. I want you to feel welcomed. Good to see you. Nice to see you, too. Where everybody knows your name. Yeah. So I have always I could make a bad joke and say she already was standing, but I won't do that. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. So, my goal is, our goal, just to put a few of these things up here. We acknowledge. Acknowledgement, sort of knowing names are important. Uh, food. What other, help me out. Being included right away. Being included. right away, without hesitation, right? Immediately, being included. These are just a few of these things. Now, the, the trick is, or the challenge is, to translate that. We know how to do that in our own homes, right? If, you, if you're, you're having a party or you're inviting people over, you want to think of that in, in the church. How do you do that and remove those barriers to do this? But it's not just enough to welcome we want to offer a glass of water. So here's the second part. Again, you'll get to talk to each other. I want you to think of a time in your lives when things haven't gone very well, or you were feeling blue or sad, uh, you were going through a, a rough spot, a difficult time. What was it that somebody said or did that helped you feel better, helped you get through it? What was done on behalf of you that helped you work through this sad or difficult time? Again, I want you to talk to the person next to you and share that experience. One of those times when th things were not going well for you, you were going through a difficult uh, time, and there was somebody that helped you 
It's sort of like when you were thirsty and somebody gave you water. You're sad, you're down, you're in need, and somebody has helped you out. What did they do? Or what would you have liked them to do? So go ahead and share, I'll give you a couple more minutes together, and then we'll hear some. Well, let's hear a few of uh, few of those things that people have done, or you wish people would have done, that would have been helpful to you when when things weren't going well. Anybody willing to volunteer to share? I would say, at the loss of a loved one, there is always friends and neighbors that come. Not only do they maybe give you a hug, but they bring something to help you out. You're right there helping. Right, yeah. Yeah. Very important. Well, my, my story is similar. When my dad died, um, the girls from Social Concerns came over, which made me really happy. They just were there for me. That's all. Just being there for you, showing up. When I first was alone, uh, I went back to school, and I had a car that was less than dependable, and I had to drive to Austin and back every day. And this gentleman here told me never to worry. If I had a car problem, he would always come and pick me up and fix the car. Bill had your back. Or, or your transmission or something. <laughs> Way to go. Never, <laughs> did you catch that promise? Never change oil yourself. <laughs> When I was going through an illness a few years ago and I was particularly down and having a hard time praying, we belonged to a book study group with Gary Hagen and Isla and Jeff Teske. And one night when I was sharing with them, I was having a tough time and I said, you know, I can't even pray. And Linda said, that's when you have to let us do your praying for you. Thank you. That's how we offer that drink of water. We show up, we pray for, pray for you, we, uh, bring food, we help out, we I'll put got your back. These little lists and these stories we just just barely touched on what what could be shared. But they're they're just the start, if you will of how we could be following God's word in welcoming others. And you're already doing it. It's clear to me. Some of these stories are just emerging out of already who you are as, as a community in Christ. Little, little to big. I want to share a story. Uh, it's sort of a fanciful story about Sir Lonfall. He's a 
He's a knight, and he's going to go on a quest. He's going to find the Holy Grail. Who knows what a Holy Grail is? The Holy Grail is that chalice, that cup, that Jesus used in the night in which he was betrayed. So, this was the night before he was ready to go on his quest, a lifelong quest for the Holy Grail. And he has a dream, just as he's... Uh, and on that dream, he's setting out on his journey, and he's stopped by a beggar who is outside his castle. And he's sort of annoyed by this beggar who's, who stops him. He flings a penny to, to him and, and continues off. And then in his dream, he covers many, many miles and searching, but it's years and nothing is found. He doesn't find this holy grail. He doesn't even catch a glimpse of the cup he, that Jesus used in his last supper. So Lon Paul in his dream has become an old man and he finally decides he must return home. And as he comes to the site of the castle, he sees the lights ablaze. It's Christmas Eve and there's a celebration going on and he rides up to the guard but the guard turns him away and he says, uh, no beggars are allowed here. Then Lon Paul realizes he doesn't have his shining armor on anymore. It's gone. He's dirty, he's tattered, he looks like a beggar. So he sits by the side of the road, dejected, and he pulls his last crust of bread out of his bag. He begins to eat it, and he notices a beggar nearby, and it was that same beggar that was out there years ago. And Lonfall breaks his bread, and he hands half of it to the beggar. Then he goes to the brook and he draws water for both of them to drink in his old knight's wooden knight's bowl. But suddenly something happens. The crust of bread tastes like fresh bread and the water like the finest wine. And he hears Christ say, hear these words, not what we give, but what we share. For the gift without the giver is bare. Who gives himself with his alms is feeds three, himself, his hungering neighbor, and me. That's when Sir Lonfall looks down at his wooden bowl and in his hands he holds the holy grail. His search is over. So he wakes up from his uh, his uh, sleep in the morning, he tells everybody, put your swords and armors away. I'm going to not go to distant countries to look for the Holy Grail. It's right here. And from that day, he opens the gates of his castle to the poor and the hungry. Isn't it ironic that as Sir Lonfall shares with another, he receives Jesus into his life and he encounters the holy. Same is true for us. As we share with others, we receive Jesus into our lives. As we welcome others, we receive him, the one who sent us. And there is a reward for those who offer a cold cup of water. It's not the reward of wall drug, but it's the reward of God's good favor and presence in our lives, the reward of faith and the strengthening of faith. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And the guy at the lectern said, Let us sing. Amen. <laughs> the song of the day, All Are Welcome in the Red Book, 641.
remain standing and recite the Apostles' Creed in unison. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, take a moment to share the peace with friends and neighbors. This time we'll have the offering where we give back to God a portion of what he has given us. Uh, we're lucky to have some special music this morning by Brianna Wegner. Give me Jesus. Just about the bridge. 
Today in our prayers, we include petitions on behalf of a number of people who are ill or recovering from illness. Uh, I see that Marlene is here. Marlene, we're including you in our prayers this morning for your continued recovery. So glad that you're able to be back on your feet and back home. Uh, we include prayers for Al Olson, who had been uh, in and out of the hospital earlier this week. Continue to remember Alice Yans Yans Yansky. And then uh, we received uh, news, I announced this last Sunday, but I'll announce it again, that uh, Stu Fullerton uh, has received news from his doctors. They do not expect him to live more than about three more months. Uh, so as Stu is facing the end of his life, we pray for him and for, for Kathy in this time of need. Stu also asked, uh, I understand that uh, conversation is difficult, that it, it's easier for him to respond to emails and or text messages or cards and letters. So I invite you to uh, kneel or remain seated or to stand if you wish for the prayers. Strengthened by your spirit, who gives us words to speak and hearts to care. Let us bring our hopes and our needs to God who listens. Fill your church with bold witnesses, those who will work for justice, serve with compassion, share your love, and spread the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, Bless the work of our missionaries, Karen Anderson and the Lofstroms, those in our companion synods in Bogota, Colombia, and the Central Diocese of Tanzania, and the ministry of our partner congregation, Kiambo Lutheran, in Tanzania. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Pour out your spirit on those without access to fresh water, on those who dig wells to provide it for them, that they may be refreshed, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Stir in the hearts of those who thirst for justice, that they bring peace, speak out against oppression, and preserve human dignity across the globe, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask that you'd make families everywhere to be places of safety, encouragement, and love. Protect and uphold healthy relationships between husbands and wives parents and children, friends and neighbors, and all your people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Wherever there is brokenness, we ask for your healing. Bind up our wounds. Teach us compassion. Dry our tears. Be especially with those we name now, Shannon Rice, Jan Helfritz, Bill Niebuhr, Stu Fullerton, Kathy Goldman, Shara Steckelberg, Bud Fox, Marlene Sievers, Patty Adams, Al Olson, Alice Yansky, and those we name in our hearts. Give them comfort, reconciliation, and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for this congregation in its, in its time of transition. Provide pastoral leadership as you see fit. We ask that you would bless this congregation with another interim pastor until the time uh, called pastor may be installed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for a healing time for when we can focus on you and your renewing love. Amidst our busy lives, help us to stop, focus, and rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for those who have gone before us and through their words and deeds have passed the faith on to us from one generation to the next. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. At this time, we're going to do a litany of farewell. I, Denny Roland Hagen has agreed to come up and be the leader for this. This is printed on the back side of your Kyrie eleison. farewell for Pastor Peter if you would please follow the dark print and read as we come to those parts. The church continues to be renewed and changed by God's Spirit. We welcome new people while others leave. It is important that we recognize these times of passage of beginnings and endings. Today we share the time of farewell with Pastor Peter Soli whose interim ministry now comes to a close. I thank you, this congregation, the members, friends, for the love, for the kindness, and the support that you've shown me during this time of interim. I ask now for your understanding and the forgiveness for mistakes I have made and for expectations that I've left unmet. I'm very grateful for my leadership has been for all that it has been accepted, and I know that I will remember with great joy the many things that we've been able to accomplish together. So as I leave, I carry with me many memories of life we've shared together. I forgive you for any or all of your failures. I also humbly accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God and Christ, to whom we are called to serve. Do you as members of this congregation now release Pastor Soli from the duties of intentional interim pastor? Do you offer your encouragement for Pastor Soli's ministry in new circumstances? Do you, Pastor Soli, release the members of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church from turning to you and depending on you? I do with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here at Good Shepherd? I do with the help of God. Let us pray. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughter and tears, our hopes and our disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories and move us in your directions until that time comes when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. I'm going to return to you the stall of the office of pastor, as well as the keys to the church and the office. This congregation continue to be blessed under new leadership.
Go now, Pastor Soli, surrounded by our love and led by the promises of God, the presence of Jesus Christ and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a note before we receive the benediction, the call committee did not meet this week. They are planning on meeting tomorrow evening before the exit interview with Pastor Soli. Uh, from what I hear, Andy has lined up pastors for the Sunday services through July. Pastor Lori will be taking the Wednesday evening services and hopefully the Synod will be able to find us a new interim until the time comes that we no longer need an interim. So uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, we can probably meet downstairs and, and uh, talk about that. So, But for now, let's receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. All are invited to the social hall to which Pastor Soli uh, well on his next interim and to enjoy uh, Coke and Diet Coke. No, no, it's coffee and decaf and regular coffee and goodies. Our sending song is Oh Beautiful for Spacious Skies in the Red Book 888.